Welcome to the Artist Work Ethic Podcast. I'm Mike Pilak. I'm a screenwriter and filmmaker who's always looking to maximize my time and potential as I work to break in. In this podcast, I talk to artists of all kinds who have seen success in their fields about their process, habits, and work ethic. Today on the show is Mike Wade. Mike is an actor who's recently had large recurring roles on the CBS and Paramount show SEAL Team and Netflix's Jupiter's Legacy. He's also guest starred on NCIS, Timeless, and For the People, and SEAL Team was just renewed for a sixth season to stream on Paramount+. A couple quick things before we jump into the episode. I've talked in the past about myself working on breaking into screenwriting. Please check out blackoilfilms.com slash screenwriting. There you can check out some of the screenplays I've written. I have the first 10 pages of each one uploaded, but feel free to email me at the artist's work ethic podcast at gmail.com, and I'd be happy to send you a full script if you're interested in reading. The script I want to highlight today is an original one hour pilot called Top of the Hill. Top of the Hill is about an up and coming congressman who discovers his car covered in blood with no recollection of the night before. Now he must unravel what happened, all while navigating a campaign, a divorce, a traitor, and alcoholism. Last thing before we get into the episode, I would love anyone listening to subscribe, rate, and review the Artist's Work Ethic podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. It really helps us put the show out there for more people to listen to. All right, Mike, thank you for coming on with me today. Yeah, thank you for having me. So you've been working a lot lately with, you know, some big roles on SEAL Team, Jupiter's Legacy. Aside from your talent, what in your work ethic do you think has propelled you to those roles? Well, yeah, you know, it's funny you mentioned SEAL Team because uh, I've got a story for that that I'll get into in a second. But um, so my my folks, my parents, they work hard. Mom is from L.A. You know, I'm from L.A. My dad is actually from Oklahoma, grew up on the farm. So, you know. Is work. Uh, it's you know you're doing work inside the house and outside, uh, inside and outside. So uh, I was always taught to just do uh, the best job that I could, give 100 percent. Before you know, I was so blessed to be doing what I love, which is acting. You know, I, I had the little uh, part-time jobs too, like everybody else, lifting heavy stuff for you know not a lot of money. You know, I, I just learned. Uh, I think through books like Think and Grow Rich to, you know, be faithful in small things, you know, quote unquote, because there's really no small thing. It's just how can you rise to the occasion? So uh, I just learned to not slack off, but to learn to add value to whatever I was doing. You know, so if I'm loading a truck or if I'm washing cars, you know, to make some money, I just change my attitude. I have to make sure I have the right attitude of uh, doing a good job. And then once I, I noticed once I did that, better opportunities started coming in. So you mentioned that uh, some of your work ethic was instilled in you by your your parents. Mm-hmm. What other sort of experience in your life do you think has pushed that work ethic, you know, higher and higher? Well, I, I just see that it, it pays off to put in the work, man. You know, as an actor, I do see sometimes people, they're not as prepared. And, and that's, you know, that's their thing. But from the, the acting school that I graduated from, uh, you know, school I went to before that, they just really taught us to to put the work in and it pays off. You'll have longevity that way. You know, if not, you're gonna just burn out real quick because, you know, you may be able to get into the door based on your looks or something about you, but your work ethic is what's gonna keep you there and to keep you rising. How are you structuring your day to be most productive, whether it's working on your craft working on your business side or, or just the combination of the two kind of what's your general day to day of, I've got to get things done. I've got to advance myself. How are you working that daily? Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's daily and, and, and somewhat nightly too. Like I'm, I'm really big on uh, the mind and what we think about and all that type of thing uh, in a more practical way. So before I go to bed, you know, I'm, I'm thinking about my goals, you know, 
maybe the next day, but also just long term. You know, I'm really big on what I feed myself as far as, uh, you know, the thoughts that I have, what I'm listening to. And, you know, is a quote from Henry Ford, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. You know, so those are some of the things, those type of quotes that I held on to throughout my journey. So first thing in the morning, man, you know, it's just something, uh, you know, spiritual or motivating, you know, keeping me going. So when it comes to like faith and things like that, I'm kind of a more of a universal, like, if something, whatever someone would call God, you know, some, not everybody believes in that, but I think it's a universal thing. So, you know, just focusing on what I'm about to do, uh, eating something healthy, drinking plenty of water and, you know, pretty early, man, I'm getting in the gym and that's really helping me to uh, focus on my day. Uh, and then, you know, may have like a rehearsal, reading something, studying film, TV. Uh, yeah, those, those are the type of things that I do. It sounds like I'm a big list person. I I mm. probably I probably drive my wife a little crazy with lists. Is I have a list of things that I do every day. I write it down on paper, and definitely one of the last things I do before I go to sleep at night is I make sure I checked off what I wanted to do that day, or at least a majority of it, and I start prepping what I'm going to do the next day. And I've found that to be hugely helpful in just my organization and just keeping me taking that next step because if if I've got it written down and I don't cross it out, I feel like crap. You know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, man, we learn things on this journey, man. And uh I know we we may feel like we want things to speed up. You know, I I wanna be doing this. I'm gonna be leading some movie or some TV show tomorrow. It's like, nah man, the, the things you learn along the way are so vital. And it's best just to live in a moment. And um, the reason I brought that up is I learned that too. When you have a goal, write those things down, man. And there seems to be some type of, I don't know if you, magic, if you will, to that writing down what you have uh, in mind. To me, it's at the very least, it's clarity, you know, yeah, because absolutely. you're not just going in all these different directions. You're, you're focusing on what you want to do and you'll get to that goal. I kind of point a lot of things back to working out because I, I've, done it for a while. I enjoy it. But I also realized that I could be in there for like two hours, but I could make more progress in an hour when I, you know, I have a trainer now. When I've been working with my trainer and I have clear goals and I know how to get there versus just doing a whole bunch of stuff, spinning my wheels, thinking that I'm doing something. Yep. Yep. Probably just hurting, like injuring myself. So, <laughs> you know, like over, over working out. So, yeah. So a, a recurring theme on this show has been that the people who have found success do things to set themselves apart from their peers. Right. What, what sorts of things, or what's an example of something that you've done as your career has grown to set yourself apart from, you know, the other people, you know, in, in your same peer group? Uh, man, you know, the, the first thing that comes to mind is, is priority. And that's like no knock to anybody because this, this is the thing. There's plenty of people who come into this and, hey, I want to act. But then they end up doing something else. They're a casting director. Maybe they're writing. Maybe they're directing. Maybe they get out of the business, period. And that's okay. Like maybe you realize, like, oh, you know, maybe this isn't for me. Um, but for me, um, I got into acting later in life. You know, I was a senior in college. Got bit by the acting bug when a buddy of mine said, let's take these classes. So by the time I actually got into a professional class and, and paid that money, I was like, no, I, I definitely want to do this. So when the teachers are like, yeah, don't be on your phone, don't, you know, you don't miss a day. And I'm like, you ain't got to tell me nothing because there's no way I'm paying you this money. And I'm like, want to go do this and that. And that's just, that was my mindset at that time because I got into it so much later. What I would say is that I just stuck with that. What I learned before is make it a priority. And, you know, really I, I put it first and that's not an easy thing to do, you know, because if people want to start a family, travel, these different things, that's cool if that's what you want, but you, you got to have your priorities. Yep. Um, that's the number one thing. And then, yeah, just put the work in and continue to evolve as a person, love what it is that you're doing. If you don't love it, don't do it. It's way too much work. It's way more work than what people think. You know, some of my buddies used to think that I would just show up to an audition. It's like, bro, do you understand? I got to 
learn all these pages and and have like basically do a conversation like I'm talking to you now. <laughs> Yeah. That's the, that's the amount of work that you got to do, man. And it's it's not just showing up and talking. And so, if you love it, though, it doesn't really it doesn't really feel like work. We all get you know the rejections and the nose in in all these businesses. How have you handled the rejections that you've gotten and just kept the focus and the drive to keep you know moving on? Well, yeah, that that was that wasn't necessarily an easy thing. Thankfully, I've been able to do it. You know, I, I mentioned that I got into this later, you know, when I was a senior, like I always wanted to act. It's, it's, when, as a little boy, it's always what I wanted to do, um, but I didn't really get the courage to do it until I took those classes. But our reason, the reason I bring that up is I always had this admiration for people who were like, yeah, I was a child and I was acting and all this time. Oh, that's great. But I also recognize that some people I met, if they had been in it for a minute, they kind of got jaded. And they like their attitude was off. Fortunately, I was able to recognize it and be like, well, I think that, you know, from different books that I've read, when we see something in somebody else, you got the opportunity to see, or oh, maybe that's in me too. And or you can just judge them <laughs> and think that you're better than them, or you can take the lesson. And so uh, that's what I did, man. And basically what I'm saying is you're probably gonna keep getting opportunities, but if you're jaded, you're basically shooting yourself in the foot before you even walk in the door, because they can feel that vibe of, oh, I really need this job, or the thought that, oh, they're not gonna give it to me anyway, and why'd you show up? Keeping the right attitude and staying connected to why I'm doing what I'm doing is because I love it, you know, and I hope to have a, a positive impact on people. Thinking back, when I mentioned my first question, I just remembered this, you had mentioned that you had a SEAL team story, and I, yeah. I, think, we, I think we jumped ahead without, uh, and we missed it, yeah. so. I'd say, well, say, go for it. I'm glad you came back, man. Me, I can, I can talk about this forever. So, because like I mentioned, I love to inspire and encourage people because that's what helped me out. But yeah, the reason I love to share this story, man, is because so this is my second season uh, working with SEAL Team. Uh, but over the years, I had auditioned for the show a bunch of times, a bunch of times, man. So, so I'm talking like to the point where like, me and a girlfriend are about to go to the movies or something. We're about to go do something. And then get that email from my agent. I'm like, hey, baby, <laughs> I, got, I, got, I got work to do. You know what I'm saying? And the thing with SEAL Team, man, is, you know, depending on what character, you got some pages. And on top of that, they have like a glossary in the front for like the military jargon. You know, cause like I said, I'm not in the military. So you have to learn those things and say them like you're, you know, you've said them for years. So I just was like, no, I got to do this. I can either go see this movie and watch somebody do what I want to do, or I can work to be that person on the screen. You know, so that's the choices I've made. Over the years, man, just going in, going in. I remember when I got back from shooting uh, Jupiter's Legacy, I had like maybe two auditions within a week or two back to back, just like, you know, within two weeks, something like that. Um, and, you know, my agents are like, yeah, we feel good about this one. And, you know, nope. But then Lieutenant Soto came along. And I was like, oh, that's why I didn't get those. That's why I didn't get those parts because this is the one for me. And those other ones were maybe one, two episodes. Like I said, I've been doing a couple of seasons with, with the uh, SEAL team. So that's why I love to share that story, man, because keep the right attitude. Now, if I had gone in for one and felt that I was supposed to get it, and then, you know, not knowing what's on the other side of the wall, and then the next time I go in and have an attitude, they go, oh, something's off, something don't feel right. And then you just mess up your opportunity because people want to work with people they want to work with. Sure. Or the attitude that if you walked in there at the call third, fourth, fifth one, being like, I'm, I'm just sick of this. Why are you even calling me in? And, you know, if, if they felt that attitude, they'd be like, do we, do we want to spend 18 hours a day with this guy? Exactly. Out there in the heat or, or wherever, you know, cold. So, you know, all those things come into play, man. But if you if you can stay connected to why you're doing it, and I had to get to that place. I, I had to get to the place where I was like, okay, I go in for an audition. If I feel good about the work that I did, I'm good. And yeah, there's going to be times when you mess up and you don't have to be perfect. You really don't. Because you can go in feel like, oh, I flubbed this line. And, and then they still call you back because they see something they know you can do the work. So just keep the right attitude. Like that's number one. You know, that's, and, and then you do the work. And, and that, that'll take you a really long way. 
It's great advice. Is there anything that you want to plug or talk about before we go? No, nah, man, just uh, just uh, more SEAL Team. Uh, you know, it's on Paramount Plus now, so people can uh, watch every episode, you know, all their favorites. You know, all the seasons are on there, man, so check them out. And, um, yeah, we're hoping to get some some good news soon for season six. But, it's uh, yeah, it's just been great. It's been great working with SEAL Team. Awesome, Mike. Thank you for coming on with me today. Well, well thanks for having me. Thank you so much for listening today. Please subscribe to the Artist Work Ethic Podcast anywhere you listen to podcasts and please rate and review the show. Follow us on Instagram at The Artist's Work Ethic and check out theartistsworkethic.com.